name is Sebastian Kirilla. I was born in Romania, and guess what? In the 1990s, we were listening to this song. So my brother was a huge fan of Crystal Lewis. Uh, I attended a Christian high school, and we somehow got the Crystal Lewis CD, and we were listening to it. So when my parents went to work, we would do a concert. So I don't think the neighbors knew any English, but they were listening to the song. So it, it is what it is, you know. It's been 20 years since uh, um, I came to the United States. My wife and I got married uh, in 2003, and then the very next year I graduated college and I came to the United States. For three years I was in South Carolina. I worked as a teacher uh, with the company in South Carolina. And in 2007, we came to Farmville, Virginia, and worked for Prince Edward County. So we were a member of this church for 12 years. Um, it was a wonderful time. We spent some really good times together. But in 2019, uh, the Lord was calling us to move to some other place. And um, it, was, it was really hard to leave the, the church and, and find a different church. We didn't find a Concord Baptist Church. We found a smaller church. Uh, we're, we're just missing you guys. And it's so nice to be back and, and be the guest speaker for the first time here, be the guest speaker. Um, but it's so nice to see you guys, and I'm, I'm blessed to be here with, with people that serve, people that they decide to step in. We help with praise and worship, and then Addy and uh, his wife is, are, are here. They're, they're praising the Lord. Other people are stepping in to help with the audio and the visual, and it's so nice to use our talents to, to praise the Lord. So uh, I'm a teacher. I'm a math teacher, so I got 88 minutes. I'm going to set my timer here. <laughs> Okay, so good. I have a two-minute timer to tell me that it's time to pack up. So I haven't started school yet, so I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, I'm, sometimes I schedule even my, my break. You know, my break is on a schedule because I don't want to miss it. You know, I wake up at 6.30 to make sure I take full advantage of the break. So it's been nice to be... Uh, to enjoy the, the sun, to go to the pool, to, to go and visit. But... Um, I was thinking, what's the best message we can have than the message that you heard already this Sunday multiple times, and that is homecoming, homecoming into heaven, going to heaven. So this year was the year we traveled to Romania, and we convinced Tracy Hamilton to join us. And Tracy, as you can know, she, she's a party girl. She can't wait to go party. So the first thing we had to do was get a passport, you know, so we took care of that. We got tickets, we got passport, and we speak Romanian a lot. And uh, so we were sort of like the translators, and I do want to apologize to her. At some point in time, we stopped translating. We're just, we're just in the moment, you know, we're just there. Homecoming is sometimes like that. So I was thinking, you know, homecoming could be two different kinds of homecoming. The first homecoming is the one we experienced right at the beginning. We went to Romania, we got on the airplane, we're excited, we're pumped, we ate some Chick-fil-A, we were ready to take on the world, you know, and then we, we got on the airplane and the, the captain said, you know, there's some turbulence in Germany, we're going to have to wait an hour, it's 10 o'clock, it's 10 p.m., it's fine, we can fall asleep. Uh, we turn on some movies, I watch some movies, some movies watched Gabriella right next to me. <laughs> She was like having a peace time, you know, she's right there enjoying. I'm thinking, how, okay, well, thank God for that gift of sleeping when you need to. I need that. I need that in my life. And, and then we were, you know, excited. We got to Germany. Our flight is a little bit late. We're trying to get, catch our other flight. And so we were running. There's, there's a little bit of excitement. Eventually we get to Romania. One of our luggages didn't make to Romania, but we are home. You know, I got clothes. We got food. We got everything. We're excited. We're pumped. Super excited. The time we get home, family's there, they have food, they can't, they can't wait to hug you, they want to talk to you, they talk to Tracy, you know, they don't speak English, Tracy doesn't speak Romanian. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. We're all in it. It's, you, feel, you feel the life, you know, you feel loved, you feel appreciated. There's food, lots of food. They've been cooking and, and they, they had all the things for you, you know, we're excited about that. So we have, this is one of the experience for homecoming. The other experience of homecoming is when I went to see my family. You know, before we went to my family, we had fun. We, we went visiting Romania, we went up on castles, we saw fortresses, we saw these wonderful things. And in the meantime, I'm telling Tracy, Tracy, 
my family is a little different, okay? So I don't know what's going to happen. So don't get your hopes high, you know? It's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it could be weird. It could be really, really weird. I know they're Christian, but it could be weird, okay? So that's how it is. I mean, I was thinking about Jacob. Jacob, in the book of Genesis, you know, if you look at Genesis chapter 32, uh, God is calling Jacob to go home. He is now going home to his family. When he left, he kind of ran away. And his older brother wanted to kill him. So it wasn't like, you know, a good farewell, goodbye kind of thing. And he's coming back. And he's stressed. He is stressed. So I just want to read for you Genesis chapter 32, verse 7 and 8. And this is what it says. Genesis 32, 7 and 8. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people with him into two camps, along with the flocks, cattle, and camels. He thought if Esau comes to one of the camp and attacks it, the remaining one can escape. You know, so you don't make this kind of plans on a homecoming sometimes, but sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. You don't know what's going to happen. Well, what Jacob didn't know is that even though he was stressed, as the verse 11 is, is saying that Jacob is praying to God, saying, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid of him. Otherwise, he may come and attack me, the mothers and their children. So he, he is really into deep distress. What he didn't know is that God orchestrated everything. So God is, is talking to Esau as well. So it's, it's sort of like a different kind of homecoming. You know, you're stressed. You know, it's it's going to be bad. You don't know. You don't know how it's going to be. Well, if you actually read the whole chapter and the rest of the chapter, Esau comes back and they meet and they're like, uh, you know, Jacob had all these gifts and flocks and everything, trying to appease them, appease his brother and everything. It's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's been 20 years. I missed you. It's so nice to see you. So it could have been all kinds of uh, sad ending for that to happen. And it was the same for me. I haven't seen my, some of my brothers in 20 years, so we didn't know what's going to happen, you know. So then we got together. And uh, we were to a neutral place, you know, and then we're like, let's go to a restaurant. And we had some fun and uh, we reconnected together and praise God for the wonderful homecoming. So homecoming is one of the things that you do sometimes that you have to do sometimes. Sometimes you do because you want to, like you guys are here because you want to be here. So this is the question that we're going to ask. What, a, what kind of homecoming are we going to have when we go to heaven? You know, in Jesus, in, in, chap, in Matthew chapter 25, he has a parable about talents. And he's talking about the one with the ten talents and the five talents and the one with one talent. Right? So one homecoming ending could be what Jesus is saying in Matthew uh, 25. You know, he's saying, well done, good and faithful slave. You have been faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy, right? So that will be one of the ending for the homecoming. Or it could be the other homecoming where the one that had one talent is now coming out with the plan. What, what am I going to say? Uh, well, you know, I, I know that you're a harsh master, and so uh, I was afraid. So I was digging up a hole, and I, I hid my talent. So you have all this stuff, and then what's the ending? Right? Verse 26 says, But his master replied to him, You evil and lazy slave, if you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gather what I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money in the, with the bankers. And I... When I returned, I would have received my money back with interest. Right? So that could be the other ending. right? And then uh, it goes on, verse 28, saying, So take the talent from him and give it to one, of the, uh, one who has ten talents. For the one who has more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And throw this good-for-nothing slave into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of, of teeth. So these are the two endings for our homecoming into heaven, right? So today we're going to look at one passage from 2 Peter chapter 1. And we will have the, the um, words also on the on the 
on the screen. It's easier when I read sometimes, I pronounce it like the Romanian ways and it kind of sounds funny. So, and you can read it with me so you know what I'm talking about. So, Second Peter starts like this, greeting Simeon Peter, a slave and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who obtain a faith of equal privilege with ours through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may share in the divine nature escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the kingdom of God, in the kingdom, let me read that one time. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be richly supplied to you. Therefore, I will always remind you of, about these things, even though you know them and you established in the truth you love. I consider it right as long as I am in this bodily tent to wake you up with a reminder, knowing that I will soon lay aside my tent as the Lord Jesus Christ has also shown me. And I will also make every effort that you may be able to recall these things at any time on, after my departure. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we're so grateful to be in your house today to worship you. Bless this word that you bring forth to us and bless our hearts as we are listening to this word and help us put this in practice as we want to glorify you with our lives. So uh, as you read, this Peter is actually using his Semitic name, Simeon. Simeon is not Simon, it's Simeon. It's like sort of like an endearing uh, way of calling. You know, when you go home, your parents call you, you know, little Sebastian, or you know what, they have some really sweet name for you. And that's one way you can really connect with people. So as a teacher in Northern Virginia, I have students from all over walks of life, all over places. And I had this student a couple of years ago, her name is Anastasia. Well, her parents actually call her Anastasia because that's how they pronounce it in Russia. You know, that's her name. So, you know, first day of school, you want to make a good impression. I have a seating chart. I didn't have one for today. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll fix that next time. Uh, so we just want to make sure, find your name, see where you, you're, you're going to be seated, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, so I don't have to pronounce their name and, and get embarrassed by not knowing how to pronounce that. So when I got to Anastasia, I called her Anastasia and everybody was like, oh, that's not her name. Well, you can ask her. And she said, yeah, no, actually, that's my name. That's how my parents call me at home, you know. And you build a different report with, the, with that student because then you actually know them and know some of their experience in life. So I think uh, Peter here is trying to tell us that. Here's, you know, here's me. You, you are my family. I'm going to share this information with you. He also uses the name Peter, you know, name that Jesus called him, uh, the rock, you know, Peter. So he has that familial look to us to make sure he is conveying his message to, to his audience. You know, so 
um, he is continuing, you know, to, to set what he, who he, he is. In verse 1, he says, To those who obtain a faith of equal privilege with ours through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's not better than all the people listening to him, right, or reading this. He's not like, oh, I'm Peter, so you better listen because, you know, I'm the grandpa of all you. All you. This is my church. This is what you. No, he's he's equal. He's with us. He's been through all this. He wants to convey this message. He's telling us towards the end of this passage that he's about to depart from this bodily tent. So it's so nice to have an opportunity to talk to people at the end of their running in life because they will tell you the important things. They're going to ask you, they're going to tell you, you know, stay close to God, walk with Him, you know, do these wonderful things. This is the way you get better into your walk with Christ. It's so much better to listen to that kind of speech rather than like, you know, you should invest in crypto or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you're 503B, you know, you're not investing in, you use this company. Yeah, that's, just, that's temporary. That's temporary. That's not what we want. We want the most important thing. And that's what Peter is sharing with us. So he continues in the next verse. And I really like this, and I have been practicing this more often. He's blessing his audience. We need to bless the people with us. You know, even people that don't know Christ, we need to bless them. Because having a blessing or sharing a blessing with other people make them report to you in a different way, right? Look at his blessing. May grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And I've done this recently, the last couple of years. I've been doing that, you know. I, in my conversation with somebody, I'm like, may God bless you and be with you, you know. We, if we do a prayer, we have sometimes, a, 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 we have a Bible study at school. We get together with people, and we have our devotion together. And then at the end, we bless them. Go be with God. Walk with God. Be blessed in your day with your, your children. It's a, different, it's a different way of walking, right? Rather than be like, uh, good luck. Uh, I hope, you know, the bad bugs don't bite or whatever we tell the kids or, you know. We, it's so much better to bless people. Bless people. But it's not just a blessing, an empty blessing. It's a blessing in the knowledge of Christ. That's what's blessing. You know, we can bless people and we can be a cheerleader for people but have no substance have no, nothing behind it. And I work with teachers, and some of them, you know, they're great cheerleaders, but you learn nothing. And then that doesn't help you with anything. So the knowledge of Christ is the one that we actually need. So I went to the dentist this Monday. I just, I'm, I'm on my checklist. Remember, I'm on vacation, so I got the stuff that need to be done. So I had to do a dentist cleaning appointment. And wonderful, wonderful place. People want to connect with you. They're travelers. They've been to Italy. They've been to other places. We've been to Romania. So they ask you about that. And then they say, you know, Sebastian, the school is about to start. I'm like, no, I don't want to talk about that. I've been enjoying it. You know, I'm, I'm getting a little antsy, a little stressed. You know, I'm, then, you know, they, they finish all they wanted to talk to you about. And now they start cleaning. And I'm holding upside down for my life. I'm like, uh... I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm actually stressing. This is not good. I'm thinking, oh, this Sunday I need to preach. I hope I'm going to deliver the message and you guys are going to hear the message. You know, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. So I'm upside down. I can't talk because people are using you know, the tools and everything. So I think, I need to pray. I need, I need to pray. That's what I need to do. And I say, thank you, Lord, for having dental insurance. You know, that extends my quality of life. I don't like it, but it extends my quality of life. Lord, I'm going to teach new subject this year. I'm, I'm stressed. Please help me with that. You know, I know that because in the past, the Lord was with me. This is going to be my number 20 year of teaching. He, I was never alone. God was always with me. So I need that knowledge. I need that knowledge in my life. That blesses you. That peace blesses you. So that's what uh, Peter is doing here. He's blessing his audience. You know, as, as we move on, 70 more minutes. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I know, right? It's, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It goes by fast. That's what I am at the end of the block. <gasps> oh, we just did the first two examples. So, oh, yeah. So I was listening to uh, a couple of pastors, you know, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. It reminds us about this as well. And it says, Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask in, or think according to the power that works in us, 
To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's the blessing we have. That was my ending of the school year. That's what I posted on Facebook uh, for the people to know. It's through his power. Through his power we did all of these. So I'm so, so glad to have that in our life. And I do that from time to time when I come from school. I, I tell Gabriel, hey, this is the song that blessed me this day. You know, I... I listen to music from time to time, Christian music, and there's some song and that just connects with me and I play for her. Or I share with other Christians like uh, from our school, hey, here's a, a song maybe you want to listen to and be blessed that way. So there are so many ways we can bless people with words, with music, with, with prayer. So these are a few things we can do. Uh, the second point I want to point out is that Peter, before he actually tells how to live, He's reassuring us that we have everything we need to for godliness. So this starts in verse 3, right? So it says, His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. So I did some research, uh, and I was looking at the words here, life and godliness. What are these words? The Greek words for, for, uh, for life here is the zoe, that's the eternal life. That's what it ex exactly means. And the other one, eusebia, means godly living. So he's talking about life as in the eternal life and our godly living with, with uh, Christ. So we need to know before we learn a lesson that we can actually learn that lesson. Sometimes you have that anxiety, right? Uh, can, can I do this? Can I repair this car? Or can I do this, whatever I need to do? I need to know that I'm able to do that. And that's what Peter starts with. He's reassuring that we have the divine power living in us and that's the one helping us do what we need to do to grow in godliness. So uh, if you look at Ephesians chapter 1, you know, par paralleling with Paul, at the beginning of the book of Ephesians, in chapter 1, verse 3, he's saying that to us as well. He says, praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. And then uh, Paul goes on to really explain what that means. And it's a very long sermon for that. So that Rick is going to cover that some other time. Okay? But what we need to know. We need to know that we have the blessings. Because if we don't, we think it's up to us to do all this work. And nobody can do this work in their power. The world is trying to do this work in their power, but they can't. We don't have the power to do it by ourselves. So we, we really need to ask the Holy Spirit to take us and, and be with us and transform our life. And through that communion with, with, uh, with God, that's the way we actually do these things, right? What is verse 4 saying? By these, he has given us very great and precious promises, so that through them you may share in this divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desires. Through that connection, we escape the uh, desires, the evil desires. You know, I read news, I watch some news, Romanian news, American news. I try to go on like neutral websites, you know. So I'm not like the ones that I use in Romania have no political layer on top of that. It's just facts. These are the facts. And we left Romania and we had this tragic scenario happening and I'm thinking, you know, this is an older man and it's, it's complicated. Don't want to get into that. But it just breaks my heart sometimes and I need to tell myself, I don't need to condemn that person. He, he doesn't have the power of Christ living in them. But what I need to do is I need to pray, Lord, keep me from that. Keep me, keep my, my feet away from that. You know, if you walk to Farmville, through Farmville, you see some trees, beautiful trees, old trees. They could be nice and blooming and green and everything, or you can see some dead trees. They're old, both of them are old, but it's a difference in quality, right? Right, trees with, with life in it and trees that are about to fall and you don't know when they're gonna fall, you know? So we need to pray constantly, Lord, keep me through your power through uh, the word, reading the word, uh, walking with Christ, you know, casting crown had a song uh, about a slow fade and the word said, it's a slow fade when you give yourself away. It's a slow fade when black and white have turned to gray and thoughts invade, choices made, a price will be paid 
when you give yourself away. People never crumble in a day, it's a slow fade. But on the opposite end, we need to be connected with Christ every day. We need to be connected with him every day. So let's, let's focus on that. Let's really work on that knowledge of knowing, growing into our um, walk with Christ every single day. I was reading this from Holman Christian Standard Bible. That's where the, the words are coming from. The study Bible said, and quote, Jesus Christ offers the only way to escape from rebellion of this evil world system that is opposed to and alienated from God. So Jesus is the only way. Look at John chapter 10, verse 10. It's a famous uh, verse that we all know. A thief, as, as in Satan, comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come so they may have life and have it more in abundance. You have the two, you have the two contrasts, right? The, the thief, the ruler of this world, is here for our perdition, for everybody's perdition. Versus Christ, Christ is the one that gives life. And the life more abundantly. So that's even more important for us. So that's the connection we need to have. We need to be part of that connection. Peter moves on now that he established that. He established that we have everything we need for godliness. He's now telling us that we need to cooperate. So he says, make every effort. Make every effort. Now, I didn't write this in my notes, but this is me eating lunch when I was in kindergarten. Mm. And they were trying to feed me with a spoon, and I'm like, no, no, I don't want it. It was good for me, but I just didn't. I was a picky eater, you know. The food was delicious. The, it was just delicious. I, I, I had an opportunity. Don't be, don't be me. Don't be me when I was a baby, right? That's not good. That's really not good. So we need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We need to uh, work on these things. What are the things we need to work on? Let's read together verses 5 to 7. Make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness. Goodness with knowledge. Knowledge with self-control. Self-control with endurance. Endurance with godliness. Godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love. So the original state is when we get born again, is that that's the faith that Peter is talking about. You know, he's saying the saving faith. Make every effort to supplement your faith. That's what it means. You just got saved. You got saved, now it's time to grow. So I love kids. I'm, I'm a teacher, so I love kids. They are so sweet. And I've seen so many kids this summer, and I really enjoy them. And some of them carry this little plush toy, you know, and they hug them, and it's so sweet, you know? So we went to this castle, and they had this white geese, like this big, tall white geese. It's supposed to be a toy. You're supposed to squeeze it, you know, be, brings you comfort. So I had this pure motives, and I said, Gabriella, let me buy you one of these. So it's more acceptable for you to carry one of them. But, <laughs> but when we get to the airport and it's time to fly, I can use that as my pillow. You know, I can put my hand on it. <laughs> pure motives, pure motives, you know. So that's, that's exactly what it was. And I was like, well, I guess she's going to be embarrassed. So I didn't buy her one. So what a, what a mistake. I think my birthday is coming up. And I think that's what Gabrielle is going to get me for my birthday. She mentioned that a couple of times. So if you see a picture of me with the white geese, that's where it's coming from, you know. It's a huge, huge bird. Just hold it. Put your head on it. Fantastic. Fantastic way to sleep on. And it's acceptable for the kids to do that, right? But if you see an adult doing that, you're like, mm, yeah, I guess it's time to grow up, sir. Uh, you know, take it like a man, you know. We have bad backaches and such, like a, like a real man. So we can't stay at that stage. We can't stay at the infant stage of just being, you know, having the faith. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to heaven. God bless you. See you in heaven. We can't do that. We have to grow. We have to grow. Everybody grows. Everybody wants to grow. And we grow in, in certain ways, you know. So one, one thing that he's telling us first we need to grow in is goodness. And I thought I, I was a good man. I really thought I was a good man. And then Gabriela said, you know, when you're going to be old, you're going to be a grumpy man. And I was like, well, why wait now all the way until I'm old? I can be grumpy now. But that's, that's, not, the way, that's not the way you should go. It's not, 
I thought, you know, I thought I'm precise. I'm precise. I'm expressing my feelings. I'm precise. I'm growing, you know. But actually, I came out as grumpy. And that's not good. Nobody wants to talk to a grumpy Christian. Uh, Sir, can you tell me about your saving faith? I see you grumpy. I want to be like you. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that, right? Nobody wants to do that. So I, I need to grow in that. I haven't heard that from Gabrielle. She was working here in Farmville that time. She was working in Woodlands at that time. So she was working with elderly care and taking care of patients. So she could recognize the signs ahead of time, you know? She hasn't mentioned that for the last five to 10 years. So it's good. This is the good news. Good news. I'm progressing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. So goodness is important because we can disarm people we talk to by having our goodness. But not just goodness, right? What's the next thing? Knowledge. Knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because uh, like I mentioned before, you can have all the love and be a cheerleader for people. But if you have no substance behind that, you're not helping anybody. So we had these two instances in Romania before we were flying. We wanted to get some gifts, and the, the prices are in Euro or in Romanian currency, and we got the prices in Euro, and I'm like, I don't remember how much is a Euro. Do you know this in Romanian currency, how much money? And the lady didn't know how to get to the system, and she asked a, another person, and the person is coming, like, don't use this, use the other thing, punching some stuff, you know, very angry. Very typical Romanian thing. It's like absolutely typical. I'm used to that, you know. And the lady goes back, the, the trainer, and she's like, can I use that? No, 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 don't touch that. I'm like, okay. Well, I told her, I was like, she was kind of mean, wasn't she? You know, it's expected. If you live in Romanian culture, that's expected. That's normal. You need to know everything. You cannot ask for help. That's the kind of personality she had. On the opposite end, we're traveling, we're going to this castle, beautiful castle. We've been walking for a while, now it's time to go to up to the top of the uh, clock tower, so we need some coffee. We stop by this coffee place, they have buy a cup of coffee and get a double chocolate donut. You can't miss that. This, this is, you know, this is, this is America now, you know, this is where we need to be. So we go in. We say, we ask for, uh, I ask for some ice latte and some other things, and Gambrell's getting this fancy new thing where you have to get a chocolate bar into the espresso-like coffee, you know? So the guy is doing this, a young guy doesn't know how to do it, and he's, he's telling us, I don't, this is my first time, I don't think I'm gonna do this. This lady walks in, calm, collected, she said, yeah, you have it. Don't worry about it. I'll walk you through. Okay, put the candy first, puree the candy, do the coffee separately, do the meal, put it together. You can do it. You can. So it's not just the encouragement, but also the knowledge together. I knew she was a Christian. I, you, can't, you can't do that on a daily basis. You can't be nice to people on a daily basis. You can fake it for a while, but you can't be nice to people on a daily basis if you don't have the Christ in you. So you can, you really can go to Romania and, and please come to Romania. It's, we saw people from Oregon, Oregon. And I was like, where are you guys from? Oregon. Oh, we are from Virginia. Oh, nice to see you. So there are people all over the place. You can, you can see people on the street, walking on the street. You can tell who's a Christian, who's not by the way they look at you, by the way they speak. You can see a big difference. And that's how it's supposed to be with us. You can't do that with us because we're always in traffic and everybody's mad in traffic, you know? <laughs> ah, you constantly say, who, mm. Well, you actually, you don't say anything anymore. You can't, you really can't. So we need to grow from the faith in goodness and then in goodness, from goodness to knowledge. That's where we need to go next, right? The knowledge is gonna help us with self-control. So I was researching self-control. I, I thought first about self-control as in just you know, what self-control is. You know, I need to control my emotions and be like that. And I got angry a couple of times recently and I apologized to my wife and it was like, I'm in the flesh. This is not good. This is really not good. I need to, I need, I need to grow in that. So I apologized to her and apologized to Tracy a couple of times too. And, uh, and I just want to be a better man. I really do want to be a better man. I was reading uh, and uh, Kenneth Wist is a Greek scholar and he was mentioning that self-control in the context, the Greek were using self-control, it has to do with sexual purity. So, um, 
I skipped over some notes here. What am I? So that's what he was saying. He was talking about how when they use the word self-control that we read in English, self-control, that's what it means, abstaining and being sexually pure. And if you think about that in Galatians chapter 5, you know, the fruit of the spirit versus this, the uh, fruit of the, um, of the flesh. If you just look at those, let's look at the contrast. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's one. Okay, look at the contrast. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit, one, singular, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things, there is no law. Right, so if you, if you think about them together, Paul and Peter saying the same thing, articulating the same thing, self-control, fruit of the Spirit. You can only produce the fruit of the Spirit as you abide in the Spirit, right? We are not producing that ourselves. We cannot produce this ourselves. Our flesh, ourself, is producing the opposite, right? The opposite things, the things that are in opposition of the Spirit. So uh, both, both of them spoke to me about, you know, I need to really focus on the, the holy things, the good things. So from self-control, Peter is going into endurance, Right, self-control may be a temporary, a one-thing thing, thing event from time to time that builds into endurance. In, endurance is a long-term, long-term. I coach soccer, I coach tennis. I knew how bad the season is gonna be when we did the first couple of weeks. You know, if people are not, if students are not applying themselves in the initial part when we are working on endurance, it's gonna be a short season. It's gonna be a tough season, right? You're playing, everybody's killed, everybody's getting better over time, but endurance takes you over to win a game. That's what it takes you to win a game. So endurance is important in our lives as well. You know, Gabra shared with me that while we were here, we were on a visa, working visa. We worked here for, for 12 years. We were applying to become permanent residents and then eventually to become citizens. And we went through some bumps and bruises and our process was stopped. We had to leave the United States for, for a number of months, and then we came back from that. And that built endurance. Now we can look back at that and say, God, you delivered me through these events I couldn't control. You delivered me through these. This, this is my testimony that I can share with other people. And you guys can then use my testimony and build your endurance and say, God, you delivered Sebastian. That guy is a buffoon. You, you can't. I mean, so much better than him. OK, don't play that. Uh, <laughs> So, but, but you can, you can work, you can use other people's experience as a way to strengthen your endurance, right? So endurance or perseverance, that's an important thing to have. What is the next thing that we need to do? As the endurance is building, we increase in godliness. Oh, what a joy to see some of you guys and see all of you, but knowing that you went through seasons of testing and now you're on the other end of that, you are in a, in a presence of more godly person. And everybody wants to be in a person of godly person. That increases, as, as Peter is saying, our brotherly love. We love each other more, right? I want to connect with David. I want to connect with other people that went to a turbulent time because they're on the other side and say, hey, I pray for you and God delivered you and I'm so grateful for that. And then that increases our love for each other. That's why we're here, because we express that our love for each other is the one keeping us. And finally, the last thing that Peter is talking about is love. And the Romanian translation says, love for all people. So from godly, becoming more godly, we increase our love for other people. I've increased in that, and I'm so grateful to God that for the last couple of years, I'm expressing that more. You know, when we moved to Northern Virginia, we had a chance to reinvent ourselves, if we can say that, you know, you're presenting yourself to other people, and people are seeing us as being more loving and more godly. So praise the Lord for that. We, we didn't do that in our power, but we are so uh, grateful for that. My sister was walking in the ways of the world. My sister is 24 years old. She, uh, she, in high school, she was just a worldly person, 
And she's now saved. She's been redeemed. When she was professing Christ in the baptism waters, everybody was so excited. They had a party in Romania. I couldn't go. It was like during COVID. It was a little bit more challenging for me to travel at that time. But we are excited for her. We, we are so happy for her. We have two other brothers that don't know Christ, and we're praying for them as well. And we know that God is the one that can deliver us. So... Now that we are here, we, we climb this ladder of faith, we're getting better. What is Peter telling us? Peter is explicitly saying that when we have these qualities in our life, we will be fruitful and useful to the ones around us, right? He also is warning the person that don't have this, and he says, quote, who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from the past sins. Therefore, verse 10, Brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the kingdom of God, kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will be richly supplied to you. So in make every effort. Work with the Holy Spirit. That's what we need to do. If we are not doing these things, then we're going to be on the opposite end. What we're producing, you know, what the flesh is bringing up. What are the two conclusions he, he's doing? First, A, you will never stumble if you do these things. And B, the consequences of this effort is the homecoming, a glorious homecoming in heaven. So I end with this. Yes, I end with this. Yes, so we have some more time. We, we have a house now. We bought a house. Uh, thank Jesus. I didn't think I was able to buy a house. I really think so. I'm, a, I'm the guy running the numbers. I didn't think we would make enough money to buy a house. But by the grace of God, we did two years ago. Our neighbor is a Christian neighbor. His family go to a Christian church close to us. And they have a garden. They had a vegetable garden in the back. They had this cherry tomatoes. During the months when they were traveling, those cherry tomatoes gravitated over the fence. You know? <laughs> And they're hanging low. So they, they get rotten, you know, that's not good for the chair. So we picked them, we ate them, we were delicious. We texted them later on and said, thank you, Tom, Tony, good job. The chairs, they're delicious, they're, you know, fantastic work. This summer, you know, we go in and we have a lot of nice back right there, a lot of mulch, two giant trees. This summer, I was plucking some weeds and Gabriel's like, oh, this is a cherry tomato plant. We haven't planted the cherry tomato plant. We don't have a box with cherry tomato plants, but we have a planter block, box, and we salvage that and, uh, and plug it in. You know what else is in that background? What do you think is in the back? Weeds. <laughs> Lots of weeds. Boy, those are bad. I mean, after Debbie, I pulled out some weeds because it was easier. Once the ground is soft, you can pull them up so much better. I've never blessed anybody with my weeds, right? I never went over and be like, sir, I have, I have a wonderful crop of weeds, and we got some fruits, and would you like, would you like some? You can do them for, use them for, never done that. But cherry tomatoes, yeah, you could have done that. Beans, you can do that. Squash, you can do that, right? So our life is producing something. We're always producing something. Are we producing weeds? Well, that's normal. You don't have to do anything for the weeds, right? You don't have to plant them. You don't have to sow anything. Just be, just be, just show up, right? The weeds come up, right? Or are we caring about the plants? I saw my family's tomato plants and cucumbers. I was like, nope, I don't have that skill. I just know, I know it. I'm not going to be able to match that. They, they beat me on that. They really beat me. I beat them on technology. They beat me on plants. So in our life, we need to produce something. We spend time here. We can do fishing. You know, you can do all things about fishing. You can do car racing. You can do all the stuff about car racing. It's sports, lots of sports, lots of activities. Break dancing. If you want to be ready, God bless you. You know, that's up to you. That's up to you. Or, or do what Peter says. Focus. Make every effort. Climb this ladder of faith. This ladder of faith is blessing you here now. We are blessing other people with that. And then you'll be in the heavens. You'll spend time with, with, with Christ. We'll have gold on our shoes. Be like, ah, this gold stuck on my shoe. Ah, it's bad. It's really bad. Now we wear it. But then it'll be, you know, just streets. Just streets of gold. That, that's, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we're so grateful that you speak to us. And you, you are the one, the author of our lives. 
we're so thankful that we can be here together, change our minds, change our hearts, and help us climb this ladder of faith because we want to be more like you. You're the author of life. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning, everything in the middle, and the end. And we want to be with you wherever we go. Don't let us walk in the wilderness by ourselves. Don't let us depart from you or um, just stray away from you, but keep us close. And, and bless everybody that was here today. Bless their, their hearts, their minds. Give them a spirit of joy, of peace, of goodness to the other ones around them. Put them in, in them love for other people. And as we go and share your gospel to the other people by the way we, we act and by the way we talk, bless them and, and touch people around us as we want to be your instruments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.